Hello, good afternoon. What is up everybody? Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and in today's video I'm going to be taking you over this $1500 gaming PC build for 2018. And doesn't it just look bloody lovely? Uh, before we get into today's video, smash that like button and subscribe if you enjoy it. But let's first dive into some benchmarks to see just how well this system really performs. This build really for me is going to be aimed mostly towards 1440p, excelling and exceeding that 60 FPS mark. 4K though is also a very viable option, providing you're willing to scale back some settings and sacrifice a little bit of frame rate. Uh, this build also supports NVIDIA's G-Sync technology to help alleviate screen tearing and NVIDIA's GeForce Now program which allows you to seamlessly record and live stream uh, any gameplay on this machine if you so desire. With that being said, I'll link all the parts in the description below and up here in the card section now, but let's dive into the parts I chose and why, and kick it off as always with the CPU. The AMD Ryzen 5 2600X is truly a great bet for this build, with 6 cores and 12 threads for fantastic multi-threaded performance, so a bit of video editing, streaming is going to work well, and newer games which are optimised for heavy multi-core workloads are going to be really well suited to this CPU. But what about older games that like to use one or two really fast cores? Well, single-threaded performance hasn't been let down here either. With a base clock of 3.6, uh, boosting up to 4.2 GHz, this chip performs well in this regard and is also a really good overclocker, allowing you to get it uh, well and above the 4.5 GHz mark if you so desired. Another really great thing about these AMD Ryzen uh, 2 Ryzen Plus CPUs, if you will, is that they come included with fantastic stock coolers. This one particularly comes with AMD's Wraith Spire, which actually features RGB. You can see it in the circular shape behind me, uh, lighting and flashing and fading, if you will, but it does a really great job. It prevents the CPU thermal throttling, because we've got some good airflow in this build as well, and even gives a little bit of overclock and leverage. Some people may want to go out and buy an aftermarket cooler, a 120 or 140mm uh, AIO from Corsair could work nicely here, but for me this suffices, it looks fantastic, uh, it does its job well and helps you to pour more money into other more important components that will boost your gaming experience. Next up, for the motherboard in this build, I selected the MSI B350M Mortar, with USB 3 and 3.1, PCIe 3.0 with 16 lanes of bandwidth for a hefty graphics cards, you also get M.2 support for super fast storage drives and 4 RAM DIMM slots for up to 64GB of DDR4 memory. And not only that, it comes in at the micro ATX form factor, which gives you the best price to performance, so uh, it doesn't give you the limited feature set and price premium that an ITX board demands, nor does it give you all the things you'll never use on an ATX board, which is going to cost you more as well. It comes with a black PCB, neutral design, and just does everything we could possibly need at a great price point. Oh, and it supports overclocking. For the memory in this build, for the RAM, I opted for Adata's brand new Spectrix D41 kit. This is the latest to their RAM lineup and actually sits as their middle of the road uh, RGB offering. It's the successor to the D40 kit, which I reviewed in the card section here, and actually looks fantastic. It's really, really modern with a diffused light strip up top and comes in either red or a dark gray colours on either side which works fantastic and addresses my previous complaints that only red was available as the main colour offering. It also works really well when overclocking, comes in at a nice fast speed and you can pick another identical kit up in the future for 32GB of RAM in this build, absolutely no problem. Superb kit, reliable, not too expensive and looks fantastic. For the storage in this build, I truly went for the best of both worlds. In a build that costs this much money, you need to have an SSD and a hard drive. The Seagate Barracuda is the hard drive I chose for this build. The 2TB model gives you 2000 gigs of capacity for your movies, music, games, Steam and Origin libraries. And the Samsung 970 Evo 250GB M.2 SSD uh, gives you one of the latest and one of the fastest M.2 drives on the market. It will allow you to install your Windows OS, keep your most frequently used games, files and applications for really, really quick access. Going for two drives allows some form 
of data redundancy or reliability and also means that rather than spending ridiculous amounts of money on an SSD only setup, you can get the speed and the mass storage without breaking the bank. But as I said, I'll link all the parts mentioned in the description below. For the graphics card in this build, I selected the Asus Strix GTX 1070 Ti. Now this was a fairly easy decision for me. Graphics card pricing has been all over the place now for the past 12, 18 or even 24 months because of the boom in cryptocurrency mining, but prices are finally starting to settle and with Nvidia confirming that no new GPUs are on their way anytime soon, it could really be a great time to pick up a new graphics card. This 1070 Ti really excels at 1440p high and ultra settings, but 4K is most certainly possible as you saw in the benchmarks at the beginning of today's episode. Uh, this Strix Coolac gives you three fans, so a triple fan design, which gives a uh, factory overclock performance and further overclocking leverage. You also get Asus's RGB support uh, on the card as well, which just adds another edge to this build and suits the rest of the components really quite nicely. It also looks good proportionally and gives you plenty of really nice display outputs. For the case in this build, for the penultimate part, it was a clear cut decision for me. Corsair's new Spec Omega RGB really caught my eye. I recently did a build featuring their Spec Omega non-RGB variant and you can find that in the card section here. That video did really, really well. This one includes two of Corsair's superb RGB fans, addressable RGB that is, as well as an addressable RGB strip integrated into the front of the case. For me, this, this, this just looks fantastic. I really was blown away when I booted this thing up with a tempered glass side panel on the front and the side. Really nice build quality and a price point that isn't really too bad. You are paying a bit of a price premium for aesthetics, but once again, it's a $1,500 build. It needs to look nice as far as I'm concerned. I'll definitely be using this case again and it's safe to say I'm a massive fan. I might even do a review video, so smash that like button if you'd want to see that. Finally, for the last part in today's build for the power supply, I opted for Corsair's CX750M. Not quite as glamorous or uh, as eye-catching as any of the other parts in today's build, but equally as important. With an 80 plus bronze certification semi-modular interface, meaning you only plug in the additional cables you need, as well as a small form factor that's nicely hidden behind the spec Omega's uh, integrated power supply shield, it works very nicely. It also is quiet in its operation and gives plenty of headroom. Like seriously, it's a tiny bit overkill, but for the price difference, I thought we may as well chuck this bad boy in. But that I think about wraps it up for this bloody lovely uh, RGB $1,500 gaming PC build for 2018. For up-to-date pricing on all the parts mentioned, links are in the description below. For more videos from me, subscribe, smash that like button, and ding-dong that notification bell so you never miss another Geekawa upload. Hit me up on these social media channels down here now, and as always, we'll see you in the next Geekawa video.